Hello fellow YouTubers, Cyphonic here. Um, today I am going to be showing you how to make my intro, which I'm sure you have just seen, because it's the intro to this video. Um, but yeah, I'll be showing you how to make this. As you can see, it's actually only two seconds long, but it's on the intro, it's much longer. Um, that's because uh, it's perfectly um, synced for a loop. Um, it's a very simple effect, even though it looks quite complicated. And uh, let's get straight to it. Okay, I've got Cinema 4D open already, because it takes an age to open. Anyway. Okay, let's settle the scene. So first things first, let's put the plane in. Make this 1000 by 1000. Okay, and then the next thing is we want to drop our text in because we want to position it on the plane before doing anything else. So go to no text. Or make it centered. I also know that for the size of my scene now, at default, um, you need to put the height at 100. Um, okay, I'm going to put Cyconic Designing. As you saw on the intro. Okay, now we need to put it in rotate mode. Grab hold of the uh, red axis and then hold shift and pull it at 90 degrees so it's facing up. And then we'll bring it up with the move tool. If you hold shift, it will go in increments of 10, 10 degrees or 10 centimeters. I believe you can change that, but I have not myself. Okay, and then let's position it so it's within the camera. Oh, come back. I'm not going to make it perfect. So this is just a tutorial. Obviously, you can. Um, Put a lot more time and effort into its positioning. Okay, so now we've got our text in the scene. Let's bring a formula tool in. Um, a lot of people look at this and find it quite complicated. It is complicated, but if you play with it a little bit, you can learn that how it works. Um, I assure you, it is worth the time and effort. Okay, for this, we're going to leave it at the um, default size. Apart from we're going to change on the first one, we're going to change the center, which is the height um, to 40, and then we're going to change, we're going to duplicate it by holding control and then dragging to duplicate, and then we're going to change that 40 to a 60. So we've got two different heights. Um, okay, now this is where we'll add the wave effect um, to the plane and the text. We'll do it to the plane first and then we'll fine tune the parameters and then we'll add it to the text. Okay, um, so let's position the first one. This one wants to go up here. This is before setting it as a child of the plane or the text. Um, and then we'll set this one over here. This is how I set it in my original scene. Okay, so now we want to make this a child of the plane first. We'll just stick with the plane. Okay, so now you can see it's had an effect on the plane already. It's looking a bit a bit rough around the edges. So let's increase the segment of the plane. Uh, I think I had 60. Uh, as you can see it's a lot more smoother now. Um, you want to be aware of how many times polygons you're adding to the scene obviously because the more polygons the slower your computer is going to go um, my computer's not amazing it's about five years old now um, so I'm surprised it's still going so just be aware of the amount of polygons you're bringing into your scene um, but 60 should be okay okay so now we want to fine-tune the formula um, within here. I have no idea what most of this does. Um, I know what the numbers do and that's what counts I believe. Okay so this first two here which is at default we want to change that to a one. That makes the distance between the waves a lot more. Um, and then we want to change this to I've got it written down here a five. Okay and that makes them um, a lot more 
pronounce the waves, let's say. Um, so you can play around with this. Um, because I've changed these parameters as well, um, it won't be a perfect loop. So if I press play now, as you can see, it loops and it will judge up. Um, that's because I've changed the parameters of it. It's not going through a full loop. So if we go down to here and change this to 60 frames um, and then press play again, you'll see it loops smoothly. So that means it will be easier for you to sort of splice together as long as you're not putting any camera motion. Obviously if you're putting camera motion in, um, you're going to have to increase the amount of frames it's got. So let's stop that. Now I'm quite pleased with that effect, it looks quite good. So now what we want to do is we want to take the formula, select both of them, so click, hold shift and click both of them and then you want to hold control and then drag up and drop it on the text okay so now you'll get the effect on the text now just so you're aware do not you cannot move just one of the formulas now as you can see by moving them it changes the effect of the text so if you do plan on moving any of the formulas um, make sure you do them both at the same time and then the animation will stay locked together Okay, so if I hit play now, you see it, it appears that the text is sitting on top of what you could say water, a wave. Um, you could add a water texture to this. I'm not going to because my computer really doesn't like it. Um, but as you can see in my intro, I had little spheres. Um, so I will now show you how I add the spheres to this to get the same effect as you saw in my intro. Okay, so let's stop this. Um, now we actually want to turn the plane off. So if we hit these, hit these little uh, nodes here, um, you'll see the plane disappear. The top one is for uh, the scene, the window file here, um, and then the bottom one is for the render. So when you hit the final render, if that one's hit like that, you won't be able to see it, but you can still use it. So the planes are still affecting it and as you're going to see now you can still use it with the cloner tool so we'll drop a cloner in and we'll put it on object and then we'll drop the plane into the object down here so now I use little spheres now you've got to be aware on this um, when you drop a sphere in it has 24 segments so that's a lot of polygons now if you're going to animate a scene and you want to see what it looks like that's going to take a lot of system resource um, and I don't have the memory for that so what I do is I drop this down to three it's the lowest amount it's not very pretty I know um, but that reduces the amount of polygons but as long as you keep render perfect on when you actually do the final render as I'll do a quick test it's a sphere a perfect sphere okay now if I remember correctly this is 10 centimeters this sphere needs to be so it goes down to that little diamond now if I drop this into the cloner and give it a few seconds there you go it goes all the way across the cloner now if I hit play it's going to go slow um, but all the spheres keep in line with the cloner you get that nice little wavy effect and if I do a quick render um, that's what you see obviously we've got no lights on the scene at the moment so let's quickly crank it up um, I used one texture in my scene um, so it, that speeds up the render times and all that sort of stuff. The less you can get in the scene um, with the desired effect, the better it is for your machine. Unless you've got a super machine that's going to render it very, very quickly. I do not, unfortunately. Let's quickly set up the scene. I need to change my aspect ratio first. Um, put it to HDTV, uh, 16 by 9. That's what most TVs are nowadays. Um, and then let's set up the position so we want to move these little handles you can either do it with these handles zoom in and out or if you hold alt and then click the left button you can move around the screen if you click the right button on your mouse you can zoom in and if you hold the wheel in you can move around the screen um, I'm still not fully used to that so I'm going to stick with the handles so let's rotate it, 
and then over there. Now, if you're wondering why I put it to the corner of the scene previously, that's so you can have it at a nice little angle like that, and when you actually play the animation, um, the edge of the um, plane doesn't disappear. Um, so it keeps to a nice little smooth um, animation. It looks like it, um, it's a full scene, so you're not seeing the edge of the plane. Whereas I actually think I do at this corner. So I'm going to move that down a little bit more. So there you go. Now if I pause it and do a quick render, um, it's all within the scene. There's no spaces. You can see all of the text perfectly. Um, so let's get a texture in. So all I did was make double click on this open grey space here and then double click again on the map and I just turned the reflection on. That's all I did for the texture. Very quick, very simple. Um, and I'm sure you agree, a very nice effect. Now if I do a quick render with the default line, as you can see, um, it's just a, a full scene reflection. Um, there's no light in there apart from the one Cinema 4D adds, which you can see puts this specular diffuse effect um, on the sphere. Um, you do want that specular effect. Some people turn it right down, but um, for this we want it. So let's just to speed things up a little bit I am going to turn the sphere off so it's no longer a clone um, add a camera so I can keep my position drop in it and out of it again turn it off for the scene so I'm going to come out now let's turn the plane back on for the editor so we can just see the space and it, it will run a lot smoother without all those spheres there because the amount of polygons it takes like I said um, unless you've got a super duper graphics card or computer. Okay, so let's add one light and that's in the center. Um, so we need to drag it up a little bit. It doesn't matter massively how high, that's up to you at the end of the day, depending on what effect, whether you want it dark or light. Now I had a bit of a bluey sort of green effect on that light, that top light. Um, and let's put this shadow soft mask. Um, I didn't put any visibility on that light and let's put an inverse square physically after it and let's go back to the camera shot turn the spheres on again quickly so we can see what it looks like yeah it's alright, could do with a little bit of tweaking and improving but at um, the moment I'm sort of happy with that we'll just stick with that for the moment as you can see, we now have the spheres on very slow. Let's turn those back off. Uh, we'll add one more light. And what we'll do with this light is we'll drag it over to this edge and then drop it down. And then what you want to do here is do the same soft map, leave it on a white, but you want to put volumatic. So then when we go into the scene, and we'll turn the plane the plane to the optical we render. So now if you see, you can see the volumicity coming underneath um, the actual texture. So if we go on to that, we'll go to inverse square physically accurate. And then we'll go to the visibility. Now if we put this up by 750, the distance away will be further. So you'll get more of this white effect underneath as it waves about. Um, and that's about it really. As I said, it's an extremely simple scene. There's really not that much in there, but um, I hope you agree. It's a very, very nice effect. Um, I can quickly play it through here, but my computer will not like this. Um, it's coping quite well. Just so you're aware, sometimes when you use specific fonts, with a fillet cap on it. I'll just quickly show you here, we'll put a fillet cap on. Um, sometimes you get some dodgy little holes and um, errors within the edge of the letters with the wavy effect on. 
uh, to get around that, you want to take the uh, intermittent points up. So you put it on uniform or natural, and then I went to 16 with this, and that seemed to get rid of the little holes within the seam, uh, within the tech. So that improved it greatly. And that's about it. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. I hope you found it extremely helpful. Um, if you'd like another tutorial and more in depth about the formulas um, or any of the other effects I've got in this video, drop me a comment or send me a message on my website or my Facebook page. Um, I'm always happy to help out the community like they've helped me out. Well, that's enough jibber jabber for myself. Uh, Psychonic out. Take care.